Again, being a former Major League scout, many kids don't understand there's actually two drafts that take place. There's a draft of those that are predicted to make it to the big leagues, and there's a draft really of guys that just fill out a minor league roster. Seems we had to change a little scenery because we're getting interference with our mics, but we were talking about the third draft. Yeah, I was uh, originally drafted out of high school, probably later rounds, around the 30-something round mm -hmm. by the Rangers. I was more of a roster or a, what they call a draft to follow. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully I'd blossom into something bigger than that. Went to junior college and also was drafted probably in the 20th rounds, mm -hmm. later 20th rounds, which is also probably a more of a roster filler kind of guy and just maybe a diamond in the rough. Mm -hmm. But uh, after signing there and having some success in the minor leagues, I came up with what they call the Rule 5 draft. Mm -hmm. And that was where more I've shown my, uh, my ability to get guys out on a professional level. Mm -hmm. And I was then picked in that draft as a AAA roster, which means if you get picked in that draft, protected on AAA roster, you have to go to the big leagues and make that team. Yeah. And uh, thank God I stayed healthy and uh, he opened up the right doors for me and I had some success and I made it to the big leagues that way. Mm -hmm. And I know the most frustrating part for amateur ball players, and again, we're dealing with the inner works of Major League Baseball, is you go down and you have good seasons and you really don't factor in a plan so it's like what you do doesn't really matter. Oh most definitely I was the prime example of that. I had um, long story short is when uh, I signed with the well the Pittsburgh Pirates bought my rights because I had asked for my release from the Cleveland Indians mm -hmm. because I had seen exactly what you're talking about the politics where they've invested a lot more money and time into other draft picks before me, mm -hmm. it just wasn't going to happen for me there. Mm -hmm. um, they purchased my contract for a dollar. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I always wanted to hit. And they told me, if you don't work out as a pitcher, we'll just give you back the independent ball team and you can hit. Uh -huh. But uh, every year I would have a really great year. Mm -hmm. And uh, every year it really didn't matter. I was just, being that they invested a dollar in me, mm -hmm. it would go right back to the bottom of the barrel. I mean, I was good enough just to keep on a roster, maybe mm -hmm. a potential trade bait or something like that. But mm -hmm. it took something like the Rule 5 draft to get me out of that organization mm -hmm. and get me to where people really believed in my abilities. Mm -hmm. And I know, again, I scouted for five major league teams and I coached college ball. And I've always been what you would call a player's coach. Yeah. Popular with my players, so, you know, I get those calls at midnight hour, everybody sleep. Were they crying on the phone and frustrated because they're not getting to play? And so what's it like for you just to, the frustration and knowing you're doing well and you're really just getting overlooked because you're not one of those quote unquote status ball players? You know, that's, that's funny you said that because I had a, a night like that where my last year at the Pirates, mm -hmm. they had told me I was going to repeat A ball again at 25 years old for the fourth time. I had just finished up the year before there. 4-0 uh, with seven saves and a 1-5 ERA. So there's no way I could have done any better. The average age of that league is probably 20, 21 years old, and I'm the old man on the totem pole now, so it's either do or die. Yeah. And when they told me I was going to go back there again for my, my last year, I, was, I pretty much had my dad on the phone, almost in tears. I wasn't going to cry in front of my dad, but told him. I've I had them, do it, them to do it with yeah. me, but they parents would yeah, never do it. a little different. Me. But basically, I came to the realization that I'm 25 years old. My pa my chance has probably passed, mm -hmm. and uh, I need to get back in the workforce and get my degree done. And uh, it was it was a sobering moment in life, mm -hmm. you know, because before that it was fun playing ball. Mm -hmm. And I uh, thank God they talked me back into just playing out that last season. And I had a tremendous year there, and I ended up getting picked in the Rule Five draft again. So as a young up and coming ball player. How important is it to have a mentor in baseball to encourage you and keep you going when you get hit those lows in the game? I think it's, it's paramount. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether it be a coach like yourself, mm -hmm. a parent, um, I think which tremendous amount of help is somebody that knows professional baseball. Mm -hmm. You have high school coaches that, you know, that tried with me, but yeah. it just, it's not the same. They've never been there and never done that. I get a lot of parents ask me, you know, my kid's going to get drafted. What kind of advice do you have for me? Mm -hmm. And my advice to them is, is always, you know, make sure your kid is, first of all, mentally prepared to deal with yeah. the comings of baseball and not playing baseball. Does he have future plans? I mean, there's always a, an individual case for each kid, but there's a lot of truth into signing. You I mean, you don't want to sign low if you don't have to because mm -hmm. Number one, the monetary value, you, you want to have a little bit of money in your pocket, but more so than that is the more money they give you, the more chances they're going to give you. Yeah. And in this game, that's what you need. You need the ability to have multiple chances because you might not be able to compete until your you know, early 20s versus mm -hmm. late teens or something yeah. like that. So that's very important. Yeah, and the opportunities, I mean, I hear a lot of kids, and again, 
been in the game 30 years now, so I, I hear a lot of kids, I don't care if they give me nothing. I'll sign just to get an opportunity. So what would you say to that youngster out there? You know, I would, I would probably, you got to make an educated decision on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's everybody's dream, but if you're the type of person that is willing to go back to school or has an entrepreneurial type desire to you that you're going to do good in life afterwards mm -hmm. as far as be successful if that's one of your goals. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to work on the farm and, and raise cattle and stuff like that and school's not in your plans, by all means, go ahead and sign because you always have something to fall back on. There's always a plan you should have laid out and that's where yeah. your parents or your mentor should be there with you and let you know those things because looking at it again, I mean, I love the game enough and I had enough responsibility and, and drive to do stuff outside the game, yeah. I would do it all over again. But if I wasn't one of those type of people, I would say get it done now and stick it out. I know it's an opportunity you have, but chances are aren't in your favor. And you mentioned the mental part of the game. I would always emphasize my ball players at the next level, this level, it's all mental. Because as far as talent and ability, everybody's going to have talent and ability. And to play on this level base, you have to have your techniques down packed. So it's really mental. How mentally strong you are, it determines whether you make it to the next level. Oh, for sure. And that's another thing that you bring a good point up is just to make it to the big leagues is, you know, it's an accomplishment itself. But that doesn't mean you're going to be set for life. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different laws and, and regulations and rules throughout our Players Association that... I didn't understand until I got here, and I still don't understand the full comprehension of it. Yeah. You got to have success at the big league level. You want to get to the big leagues and have success yeah. and, and have a career here. And mental preparation is big time with that. With me, there's guys that are way better than me, have better stuff than me. They're in the minor leagues still, but there's always certain assets of the game that mm -hmm. you got to improve on and be consistent with. I think mm -hmm. the mental ability will get you to be consistent at, at whatever you do, whether it's getting ahead in the count, having a really good slider that you can control, mm -hmm. hitting the ball the other way, hitting the ball on the ground. I mean, whatever it may be, you got to hone those skills and be consistent at it. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned there are better guys in the minor leagues, and, and I constantly tell people this, this game is a business, not a game. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do a summer travel team, Satchel Page All-Stars, and I was researching the history on Satchel Page when they did finally sign him to a major league contract, they didn't bring him up, they kept him in the minor leagues because he was a drawdown on the minor league level. Yeah. So the, the kids don't understand, it's a business part and they're trying to make money on all levels. That's very true, and I, in, in the smart business-oriented, business-minded player, mm -hmm. I, I like to think of myself as somewhat like that. Maybe I'm not, I'm just kidding myself, but I found something that was a niche in the game. I drop down, I change arm angles, I'll throw the Frisbee, a lot of guys don't do that. That's something different that sets me apart than the rest of the, the guys in an organization, especially at the time of the Pirates. So for me, me being my own business, if you would say, mm -hmm. and trying to promote myself in this game, mm -hmm. that was something that set me apart. So there's a fine line, but some guys might not be able to do that. They might get hurt doing that. Yeah. And you got to understand, like you said, there's different aspects. Maybe a, a name like a Ken Griffey Jr., they'll bring back to Seattle to bring a whole bunch of people in, and he can help the team out at the same time. So mm -hmm. you got to set yourself apart in this yeah. game because you have to realize that they're, they're in it to make money. If they weren't, yeah. it wouldn't be a team. Yeah, and I know when I coach college ball, I would tell guys, if they go give you a scholarship, you use that program for the four years, and they're going to give you a scholarship to play sports for them because they're going to use you basically for four years to get their athletic program over. Same way in, in professional sports. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're, you're an employee to them. You're trying, you know, they're trying to win a series or a, a season, and if you could help them, it doesn't matter. you got to take care of yourself because there's teams that will you know, use you and abuse you. There's, there's teams that will protect you, and, you know, depending on what your status is coming up. Yeah. If you're a you know, highly touted first-round pick, they're not going to abuse you. But if you're a guy they don't pay very much money for and, and you're durable, they're just going to keep running you out there. So you got to be prepared for that at the same time. It's not going to be you're the all-star on the high school team, so everybody you know, takes care of you, not all the time. Yeah. And most people don't really understand behind the scenes, there's not a lot of longevity in baseball if you're one of those few that just so happen to get over the threshold and make it. Yeah, that that's that goes back to what I was saying earlier. With you got to have a career in the big leagues to 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 realistically mm -hmm. not work after the game and, and yeah. to live life to you know like you see all the superstars on TV. Mm -hmm. You got to take care of yourself. Whether it's diet, working out, sleeping right, not drinking all the time, you know, doing the right things that are going to let you produce. And and only you can know that. I mean, there's obviously guidelines that are smarter decisions to make than not. But some guys can do it the other way. And behind the scenes, I mean, you know. Even when you make it to the big leagues, psychologically, 
when you're having to establish yourself over that throw, so in the back of your mind, you worried about, am I going to be on the team next year? Oh, definitely. I went through that a lot earlier in my career. You're putting so much, I mean, nobody's going to put more pressure on you than yourself. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't care who's booing you, how many people are booing you or, mm -hmm. or in your corner. It's yourself is going to have to do, you know, mm -hmm. produce out there, and you got to put your own pressure on yourself. And back to the mental part of the game, how you deal with that, how you harness that and turn that around to on the field, you know, statistics mm -hmm. is, is going to overall tell you how long you're going to be in this game. Coach, taking you behind the scene with part one from DJ Carrasso. We'll be back with part two. <laughs> well, that wraps up today's show. But make sure you tune in to our next show. Same place, same time. Check us out on social media, Facebook, podcasts, and YouTube. We'll see you next week. Peace out.